1992, police searched 25 Cromwell Street, Gloucester, England, after a 13-year-old girl confides to her friend that her father essays her and films it. The friend in turn tells her own mother, who calls the police. Police visit the home and seize 99 adult videos, none of which are of the daughter's essay, but she gives a full statement to a solicitor, and all the children in the household that are under age are placed in care. Both the mother and the father are incarcerated and charged with SA. However, the case takes a turn when the children start talking about an old family joke. They said if they ever misbehaved, their father would tell them that he would bury them under the patio like Heather, the eldest daughter who hadn't been seen for years. The police question the parents about Heather's whereabouts, and while they insist she is alive and well, the police don't believe them. After the police learn of a further two unaccounted for individuals linked to the family, the police obtain a warrant to search the house on the 24th of February 1994. By March 8th, at least nine bodies were discovered at the property. This is the horrific story of Fred and Rose West. Born Frederick Walter Stephen West on the 29th of September 1941 at Bickerton Cottage, Much Markle, the first surviving child of Walter Stephen West and Daisy Hannah Hill, Fred was one of eight children. His older sister Violet died only a few hours old and his younger siblings were John, 1942, David, 1943, who died at only one month old, Daisy Jr, 1944, Douglas, 1946, Kitty, 1947, and Gwendolyn, 1951. His father was a violent man, known to be a disciplinarian and extremely aggressive, whereas his mother was described as extremely overprotective. Fred claimed his mother began to essay him at 12 years old and that his father encouraged him to essay his sisters and animals. His brother Douglas has since stated that this was a fantasy, but in June 1961, a 13-year-old Kitty told their mother that a 20-year-old Fred had been essaying her since December 1960 and that she was now pregnant. Fred was arrested the same month, but Kitty refused to testify and the case fell through. The West family effectively disowned him and sent him to live with his aunt Violet. There was also a prominent event for a younger Fred, at 17 years old, he was involved in a motorcycle crash that, among other injuries, caused a fractured skull. Afterwards, he became prone to fits of rage. Fred was known to be a ladies' man and quite the charismatic character, but his first serious relationship would be with Catherine Bernadette Costello, also known as Rena for short. Originally from Scotland, she met Fred in 1960 and dated him for several months before she went back to Scotland, and by chance they met again in September 1962. Rena was pregnant at the time by an Asian man. They married on the 17th of November, Charmaine, Rena's child, was born March 1963. To explain her mixed race heritage, they told people that Rena had miscarried the child that was Fred's and Charmaine was adopted. Later, all three of them relocated to Glasgow and in July 1964, their first and only child, Anna Maria, is born. Editing Charlie here. So I was looking at this part of the video and I realized I called her Anna Marie. I was using a source that referred to her as Anna Marie and different family trees that also called her Anna Marie. However, her sister May refers to her as Anne Marie and she published her book under the name Anne Marie as well. So I'm not sure if my original sources were incorrect or if she changed her name, but just know that if I start referring to Anna Marie as Anne Marie later on, they are the same person. Fred had numerous affairs, and when Rena discovered this, began her own with a man named John McLachlan. Fred caught the two embracing, and Fred punched Rena, which caused John to punch Fred. But Fred then drew a knife and stabbed John. Fred was known to physically mistreat Rena and their children. There was another turn of events on the 4th of November 1965. Fred accidentally hit a small boy with his van, who later died. He was cleared for wrongdoing but leaves Glasgow for Gloucestershire with Charmaine and Anne-Marie. 
Rena later joins him alongside an acquaintance, Anne McFall, and friend Issa McNeil. To escape Fred's mistreatment, Rena arranged for her lover John and Issa's boyfriend John Trotter to discreetly take her, Issa, and the children back to Scotland. Between moving in and now, Anne had begun to be infatuated with Fred and likely tipped Fred off about the plan. When the Johns arrived, an altercation broke out between Fred and John McClatchlin, and the police were called. The Johns, Issa and Rena were escorted away, leaving Fred with the children. Rena was later imprisoned for three years after stealing from Fred in November, and then Anne moved in with Fred. In July 1967, aged 18 and eight months pregnant with Fred's child, Anne McFall disappears. The following month, Rena returned to move in with Fred and their relationship initially improved, but the following year, Rena left again, allowing Fred to retain custody of the children. A fateful turn in the story occurs in early 1969 when Fred meets Rosemary Letts. Rosemary Pauline Letts was born on the 29th of November 1953 in Northam, Devon, England, to William Andrew Letts and Daisy Gwendolyn Fuller. She was the fifth of seven siblings, with four older siblings, Patricia, 1954, Joyce, 1944, Glennis, 1950, and Andrew, 1952, and two younger siblings, Graham, 1957, and Gordon, 1960. Her father suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and was prone to extreme violence and repeatedly S.A. Rose and her older sister, Patricia. On the other hand, Rose's mother was a very sad woman, suffering from depression and was given electroconvulsive therapy while pregnant. She received her last session of ECT just days before Rose was born. Her parents separated when she was a teenager. She lived with her mother for six months, but later moved in with her father at the age of 16. On the onset of puberty, Rose was reportedly fascinated with her developing body, deliberately walking around naked or semi-naked in the house in the presence of her younger brother, Graham. At the age of 13, on numerous occasions, she would also creep into the nine-year-old Graham's bed and S.A. him and her youngest brother, Gordon. And this would all lead up to her first encounter with Fred West in 1969, shortly after her 15th birthday. He was 27. The pair met at a bus stop, and Rose was originally disgusted by Fred, thinking he was a tramp, but quickly enjoyed the attention. Fred discovered Rose worked at a bakery and would often go by on one occasion, leaving her a gift. Within weeks of their meeting, Rose quit her job to nanny for Charmaine and Anne-Marie. A few months later, Rose introduced Fred to her parents, who disapproved. Her father, William, threatened to report him to social services. Rose ignored her parents and continued to date Fred, which led to her being placed in a home for troubled teens. She left the home on her 16th birthday and returned. Fred was serving a 30-day sentence for theft and unpaid fines, and Charmaine and Anne-Marie were in care. Upon his release, he collected his children and Rose and moved into a flat and then a house on Midland Road, Gloucestershire. William forced Rose into a medical examination in February 1970 and it was confirmed that she was pregnant and so she was taken into care again. She was discharged March 6th on the promise that she would terminate the pregnancy and return to her family, but instead she moved back in with Fred. On the 17th of October 1970, Heather Ann was born to Fred and Rose. Two months later, Fred was imprisoned for theft again, leaving Rose with Charmaine and Marie and Heather. Anne-Marie recalls how Rose was harsh, critical and violent. Both Anne-Marie and her younger sister May have released books recalling their experiences as children of the West family. It is a hard read, but shines a light on just how brutal their childhoods were under the care of Fred and Rose. Before Fred's release from prison on the 24th of June 1971, Rose claims that Rena returned to collect Charmaine. However, Rena called upon the home several times looking for her daughter. She was last seen in 1971 as well. On the 29th of January 1972, Fred and Rose West were married. They, Fred's first daughter Anne-Marie and their shared daughter Heather, all moved into 25 Cromwell Street. On the 1st of June, May June is born. 
Now, I'm naming all of the West children for a reason, and that reason is that they are survivors in their own right. What they went through was absolutely horrific, and unfortunately, later down the line, having the surname West would attribute stigma to them that they did not deserve. Shortly after May is born, Rose begins selling herself for adult activities and having relationships with lodgers they would take in. Rose displayed some highly sadistic behaviour towards her children, beating them for the smallest thing and was prone to fits of rage. The children often note how Fred was never really aggressive to them. It was always Rose that showed this behaviour. Fred was a different kind of bad. He talked about adult activity openly and watched adult videos with his children present, often encouraging them to watch them with him. Again, definitely recommend reading the daughter's books because they go into detail and explain their experiences using their own words. I haven't read Anne-Marie's book, but I have read May's book. In September 1972, both Fred and Rose begin essaying an eight-year-old Anne-Marie. In October 1972, the Wests hired a 17-year-old Caroline Owens as their children's nanny. They had picked her up one night as she hitchhiked. She moved into 25 Cromwell Street three days later, sharing a room with Anne-Marie. However, over time she becomes quite uncomfortable with Fred and Rose's advances on her and how they seem to be quite inappropriate and decides to move out. December 6th, the Wests find Caroline again as she hitchhikes. They apologise for their inappropriate behaviour, ensuring her that it was just a joke and that the girls all really missed her. Caroline, feeling at ease that they had apologised, decided to accept the lift. However, shortly after, Rose begins to touch her. Caroline began to protest, but Fred stopped the car and punched her into unconsciousness. When Caroline woke up, she was bound and gagged in the living room of the Wests. She was given a cup of tea and a cigarette to calm down. Fred assured her that everything had just gotten out of hand and he was very, very sorry and they would return her home soon. However, the cup of tea was drugged. This began a prolonged essay from the Wests. When Caroline screamed, Rose smothered her with a pillow and restrained her at the neck before essaying her again. Realising the severity of her situation, Caroline gave up and stopped fighting the pair. The next day, one of the children knocked on the door in which Caroline was restrained after hearing her screaming during the night, and Fred threatened her that he and his wife would keep her locked in the cellar and allow his black friends to essay her, and that when they were finished, he would bury her body beneath the paving stones of Gloucester. They calmly asked if she would return to work for them as their nanny. She saw this as an escape avenue and agreed, later being able to escape that day. She returned home and informed her mother of what happened, and Caroline's mother reports them to the police. On January the 12th, 1973, the West stood trial for Caroline's abduction and SA. The West pled guilty, but Caroline couldn't face testifying, and so each was simply fined with £50, which in 2022 would be £557.25. Yep, that's all that happened. This sent a clear message to the Wests. If they were going to do this, they couldn't let their target leave alive. On the 20th of April 1973, a 19-year-old Linda Carol Goth's life is ended by the Wests. Born the 1st of May 1953, she was known to have lodged at 25 Cromwell Street and shared intimate partners with Rose. The day prior, the 19th, she had left a note for her mother saying that she was going over to a friend's house. She was never seen again. August 1973, Stephen is born to Fred and Rose West. November 10th, 1973, Carol Ann Cooper is abducted and her life is ended by the Wests. The 15-year-old, born the 10th of August 1958, had been placed in care following her mother's death.
She was last seen by her boyfriend catching a bus to her grandmother's home. December 27th, 21-year-old Lucy Catherine Partington is abducted and her life is ended by the Wests. Born March 4th, 1952, Lucy was an Exeter student. She was taken from a bus stop along the A435. 1974. April the 16th, Therese Sagenheiler is abducted and her life is ended by the Wests. The 21-year-old was born on the 27th of November 1957, a Swiss girl studying sociology at Greenwich Community College. She was reported missing to Scotland Yard by her family in Switzerland when communication from their daughter ceased. The 15th of November 1974. 15-year-old Shirley Hubbard is abducted and her life is ended by the Wests. Born the 27th of November 1957, the former foster child was last seen at a bus stop in Droitwich. April 12th, 1975, Juanita Mott is abducted and her life is ended by the Wests. The 18-year-old had been a former lodger at 25 Cromwell Street and was believed to have been hitchhiking when she was taken. 1977. Tara is born of Rose and one of her clients, evident by the fact that she is mixed race. On the other hand, Rose's father, William, becomes more tolerant of Fred and begins to visit the house to use Rose's services. Anne-Marie is forced into also doing adult work by Rose, aged 13. In April 1977, Shirley Ann Robinson, aged 17, meets Fred at a cafe and moves in with the Wests the same month. Shirley and Fred begin an affair and she becomes pregnant around July. In 1977, Louise is born to Fred and Rose West. On the 10th of May 1978, Shirley, eight months pregnant, has her life ended. She was 18 years old. Mid-1979, Alison Jane Chambers moves in as a nanny to 25 Cromwell Street. The 16-year-old was placed into care two years prior and repeatedly absconded from the home. August 5th, Alison's life is ended. This is the same year that Anne-Marie finally runs away from home. She was hospitalised for an ectopic pregnancy and after being discharged, Rose savagely beat her. 1980, Barry is born to Fred and Rose West. 1982, Rosemary Jr. is born to Rose and a client, also evident by her mixed race. The following year, 1983, Luciana is born to Rose and yet another client. Again, much like Tara and Rosemary Jr., it's evident based on her mixed race. On the 19th of June, 1987, the West's final victim is their own daughter, Heather. Heather was trying to leave the household and the couple may have considered this to be a threat. As well as this, she had confided in some of her classmates regarding the mistreatment that the West children faced. Heather was only 16 years old. Some bodies came with clues that suggested the motive of the crime. Surgical tape was found around the skulls of Carol, Shirley Hubbard and Alison. Carol's limbs were bound with cloth. Shirley Hubbard was found with a rubber tube inserted into her nasal cavity. Alison was found with a leather belt looped beneath her jaw and tied at the top of her head. It is believed that all of the deaths bar that of Anne McFall, Charmaine, Rena and Heather were primarily adult related. All of this leads to the West's arrests and consequential charges in 1994. Fred admitted to ending his daughter Heather's life at 11.45am on the 25th of February. However, he claimed Rose was innocent and knew nothing about what he had done. He volunteered to show police where the body was. Heather was found at 2.15pm on the 26th of February under the patio. However, a third thigh bone was discovered, indicating another body. Fred confessed to ending the lives of two more people. Alison Chambers was found at 5.20pm on the 28th of February and Shirley Robinson was found at 9pm the same day. Seeing as three bodies had turned up at 25 Cromwell Street, the police decided to conduct a full excavation of the garden. On the 24th of March, Fred made a confession. I, Frederick West, authorised my solicitor, Howard Ogden, to advise Superintendent Bennett that I wished to admit a further approx nine unalivings expressly charmaine rena 
Linda Goth and others to be identified. Fred would later confess to knowing the location of Anne McFall's body, but he is always denied ending her life. Herein is the full list of discoveries. As previously stated, at 2.15pm on the 26th of February, Heather is found under the patio. Also as previously stated, on the 28th of February at 5.20pm, Alison Chambers is found buried in the garden, as well as Shirley Robinson found on the same day at 9pm. The 5th of March, at 11.47am, Therese Sagenheiler is found buried in the house. 2.51 p.m. Shirley Hubbard is found buried under the concrete in the basement. 6th of March. 9.02 a.m. Lucy Partington is also found buried under the concrete in the basement. 11.15 a.m. Juanita Mott is found buried under the concrete in the cellar. 7th of March at 2.25 p.m. Linda Goff is found buried under the ground floor bathroom. On the 8th of March at 7.10pm, Carol Cooper is found buried under the cellar. Charmaine West was found on May 4th under the kitchen floor at Midland Road. Also in May, Rena Costello was found in a field near Fred's childhood home of Much Markle. Anne McFall was found in the same field the following month of June. On the 20th of April, Rose was arrested, though Fred maintained her innocence and ignorance to the crimes. On the 6th of May, they are both jointly charged with at least five counts of unaliving another person. On the 30th of June, they both appeared at the magistrate's court. Fred was charged with 12 deaths, whereas Rose was charged with nine. When Fred tried to reach out and talk to her during the hearing, Rose ignored him. Fred took this as Rose rejecting him and he soon became very depressed. On the 1st of January 1995, he hung himself leaving Rose to stand trial alone. The trial commenced on the 3rd of October 1995, and this is some of the evidence that was brought before Rose West. Fred was serving his sentence for theft in prison at the time of Charmaine's death. He could not have possibly been responsible for it, and therefore it must have been Rose alone. Anne-Marie testified, recalling the mistreatment her stepmother Rose had put her through. Linda Goff's mother testified that she saw Rose wearing Linda's cardigan when she came looking for her daughter. Caroline Owens testified about her abduction and essay. Seven weeks later, Rose West was convicted of 10 counts, including S.A. and unaliving. The Aftermath Rose immediately appealed her sentence, but on the 18th of March 1996, it was denied. She has since been known to date Myra Hinley in prison, and she maintains her innocence to this day. In November 1996, Fred West's brother John West was found dead at his home after he hung himself. He had recently been on trial for essaying Anne-Marie, his niece. Anne-Marie had told the jury she was essayed around 300 times by John when she was a girl. In 2017, Stephen Letts, Rose West's nephew, was placed behind bars for 18 years after luring a young girl off the street. He took the 12-year-old, drugged her and essayed her. Anne-Marie, Fred's first daughter, made TV appearances after the case and wrote a book in 1995. May, the second child of the West, wrote a book in 2018. Stephen, the third child of the West, attempted to end his own life in January 2002. Shortly after, he was jailed for nine months for having an intimate relationship with a 14-year-old girl. Barry, the youngest son of the West, ended his own life in August 2020, citing that he was unable to get over his childhood. Caroline Owens, the girl who survived the West and managed to escape them, died of cancer in 2016. Investigation in the following decades would inform people that perhaps Fred West had more victims than he was charged with. At one point, Fred had a job that allowed him to commute across the country, and some girls have gone missing from those areas in the time period Fred was there. 15-year-old Mary Bastome is believed to be a victim of Fred West. However, police were unable to charge Fred with the crime due to a lack of evidence. She worked as a waitress at a cafe that Fred frequently went to. On the 6th of January 1968, Mary was abducted from a bus stop. Fred confessed to police that he was responsible for Mary's death after he essayed her in his car. Her body has never been found. 
To the friends, family and loved ones of Anne McFall, Charmaine West, Rena Costello, Linda Goff, Carol Ann Cooper, Lucy Partington, Therese Sagenheiler, Shirley Hubbard, Juanita Mott, Shirley Robinson, Alison Chambers and Heather West. I am so unbelievably sorry for your losses. I hope there is at least some comfort in knowing where they are and what happened to them and having a place to go and visit them finally. To the family of Mary Bastome, I am so sorry for your loss and I am sorry that her body has never been found. It must be unbelievably painful not knowing what happened to her. I hope that one day we can find Mary. To the survivors, those who are known and unknown, I hope that you have managed to find peace, that you have managed to get the help you need to recover from your experiences and that the rest of your life is at least hopeful for you and that you've managed to carry on. You are truly strong. On the 5th of October 1966, demolition of 25 Cromwell Street began. If only it were that easy to get rid of all the pain that happened there.